JHP Fasteners, the fabricator's choice since 1970. This is a Hager HP6C. This is the newest vintage of the HP6 series. It's a little banged up, a little scratched, but we've checked it out and all seems to run pretty good. Um, the HP6 is a six ton hydraulic machine. It has an 18 inch throat, allows you to get into up to 36 inch wide panels. And we'll demonstrate the machine, but first let me show you what we have on the machine, some of the features, how it functions. On, off, of course. We have a run and a setup mode. Typically during production you're going to be in the run mode. The setup mode is to preset the machine for a certain tonnage. So let's say you know what the tonnage is required to install a certain fastener. So you press it, uh, turn it to set up, bring the uh, pressure foot pedal down, bring the ram down, and you can adjust your pre uh, pressure to the, your preset uh, amount. Below that we have a stroke travel, and what that is, that's the up travel of the stroke. So once it's actually come down and pressed the fastener in, it's the amount of time that the ram goes back up. So if you can set that to the minimum amount and make it comfortable for the operator to pull the part in, put it, pull it out and put it back in, um, that will increase your productivity time. Your gauge for pressure, typically what you do there is your outside is your pounds and you adjust that here. Oh, and this machine we do have an auto feed uh, attachment to it. It's working. We've added a few parts to it uh, to make it uh, run an 832 stud. We'll show you how that works here in a minute. So you have a bowl feed. You have a escapement module up here and a singulation module here. Each of those are installed and reset with just one screw each. So by changing that out, changing tooling up front in the shell system, you're able to change over from one fastener to another fastener. You have an air regulator and a gauge over here on the left hand side. Manual eject, what that does is just fires one fastener up to the tooling. Bowl feed, that's just the amount that is going to vibrate the bowl. You have a continuous and an intermittent switch here. What that does is in the continuous, the bowl will continue to vibrate. In the intermittent mode, the bowl will vibrate for a while and then it will shut off. Just saving on a little bit of noise, a little bit of power. This is an air eject time uh, potentiometer, and what that does it uh, determines the, uh, the length the air is going to blow the fasteners up to the tooling. Your on-off switch, and I think I covered the manual eject already. The tooling system for the auto feed on this machine is called shuttle. You have a T bracket up here. And that will accept various types of tooling down here below, which is the shuttle mechanism itself. This shuttle mechanism can remain on the machine. You can change out the jaws, the upper tool, and the lower tool for fastener size. This is currently set up for an 832 stud. So that would allow, I'm not sure the full range, but approximately an 832 by quarter inch up to an 832 by inch and a half, I believe it is. So any 832 stud can run through this uh, current setup. This would also allow for an M4 uh, fastener to be installed as well. Can, this can run uh, nuts through a shuttle mechanism. The tooling would be additional there. The fastener is held up on the upper tool by vacuum. There's a vacuum generator around the rear. So the fastener will come in. As the ram comes down, it will grab the fastener in the jaws. The ram will proceed through the jaws, down, and press the fastener into the material. Cut. Okay, so we're going to turn the machine on here. And the first thing you want to do with this press when you turn it on is test your safety system. A real easy way to do that it's just to lift up on the ram and it should travel up. What this machine looks for for safety is continuity from the upper tool to the lower tool. If it senses continuity, it goes ahead and presses. If it doesn't sense continuity, 
the, the uh, upper sole will go back up, or the ram will go back up. I'll demonstrate the safety system here. I'm going to shut that off so it doesn't fire on its own. But right now we are still in the conductive mode of operation. And, and what it's going to do now is it's going to look for that continuity between the upper and lower tool. So we're going to try to fit this in here. And the ram will come down and go right back up. And as you can see, this is a very pliable piece of plastic. So there wasn't a lot of pressure put on this to sense that to go back up. There's a safety switch up in here, spring loaded, that looks for that continuity. If, on the other hand, you want to install fasteners that are either going into a PC board or something that may not conduct elect uh, electricity, you could flip the switch over to the non-conductive mode. During normal operation, what you're going to have to do is it will come down and apply a certain amount of pressure. The operator has to take their foot off the pedal and then reapply the foot and it will go through the cycle. But as you can see, as opposed to the continuity mode, this will continue on down. A couple of features I failed to mention earlier. We have a parts counter up here. This will allow you to count the number of fasteners that go in with a program, as I have it here, program for seven. So we'll go ahead and insert seven fasteners. At the end of the seven fasteners, it'll be, meaning that part should be done. We also have a laser light here, which will help the operator locate the, the point where you should put the hole uh, to locate the lower tool. So we'll go ahead here. We have no fastener here. We'll go ahead and fire a fastener manually. As you can see, the stud is located in the jaws, just hanging there, waiting for the anvil to come down and pick it up. Fire one again. You locate the hole over the bottom pin, and the pin is preloaded, so it gets out of the way of the faster as it goes in. And really all you want to do with this is just support the part. Turn my laser light on here, make life a little bit easier. If you heard that, there was a little bit of a beep there on the parts counter indicating I had inserted seven fasteners and that, that part should be done. So we'll just go back through that again one more time here real quick. We have the fastener loaded. Come back, just support the part. And then let the tool do the work. You don't want to fight the perpendicularity of the part to the tooling and the fastener. we have two good parts. Of course the Hager press can also be used in a manual mode. Uh, we don't have enough tooling or any tooling other than what you see in my hands that will go with this machine. Um, but there's a full complement of tooling available, whether it be for inch or metric, uh, to allow you to install all different sizes of fasteners. Um, and there all we need to do is remove the J-frame. That, that will take all of the shuttle tooling out of here, replace the upper uh, vacuum tool, replace the lower tool, and you can put in a lower tool of any length that allows you access to your part, and an upper tool that typically is going to be a flat anvil. Also with this machine they have what they call a J-hook. J-hook will allow you to get into parts with a return flange. So if you have something where you need to put a nut on the bottom side of a return flange, this will allow you to do it.